Second the motion. Jason, do you want to add something to this? Yeah, agenda? if I could add uh, something to the agenda. New business to the agenda. Thank you. We've got some stuff I, we would like to discuss. I second the motion with the new business from, from Jace. Mike? Okay. okay. Any discussion? Favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Old business. City building remodeling and rebuilding. And I think that's kind of obvious. Hmm. You like that? Yeah, that one's. Maybe I'll have to edit that. <laughs> or, yeah, in here too. Um, I'm glad Mike made it back. So things are still moving along. We have. Um, another meeting for both committees tomorrow. Um, just a reminder. Um, uh, hi, Joe, come on in. Steven wants to talk um, and he's gonna have an electrical engineer uh, this time to go through that portion of the plan. Okay. So uh, I've got a one o'clock for the liquor store at the liquor store for that um, committee scheduled and then a two o'clock for the public works public safety building here at city hall so hopefully steve said he didn't need a lot of time but he wanted to meet with both groups so uh, two o'clock two o'clock here for the public works public works yeah um otherwise things are moving along on the financial side and still working with um Rural Development and USDA and Gail. Um, Steve needs to get the architectural preliminary plans ready for USDA's approval. That's one of the things that will kind of be on a timing mechanism of the, of the funding element that we've discussed in some of the committees before. So the sooner we get that into Angela Bakavoy from the USDA, the sooner that will move forward. That's probably the big, biggest chunk of um, their documents that they need. Um, there is a public hearing on February 8th prior to your regular council meeting just for public comment on the buildings. And that, again, is only on the public works public safety side because the distillation enterprise fund. So if we're taking any comments about that, we only really need to field the general fund side. But if there's concern or chatter about the liquor store, we can, we can fund that as well. Um, I do have new funding schedules um, with the updated <laughs> numbers from Todd Hagen, and I'm crunching some numbers, and I'm going to review those tomorrow. And I would stress that everybody remembers that the public hearing is also part of its state statute that we have to have it either tomorrow or tomorrow. That's all I have on that, unless anybody else on the board has other questions. Mike, you want, you guys have anything else you want to add? No, oh, I worked with uh, Joe, can't remember his name, early this morning on some design layout stuff on the property itself out there. Hmm. Other than that, we covered everything that was up to date that I know of. Yeah, borings are supposed to happen this week. Or the borings? Yep. <clears throat> That'll really give us a good idea as to where that public works public safety position be located on that. Yeah, on that piece of parcel. Huge. Right. Nope, it would be located north of Anderson's at the end of Industrial oh. Drive, north of north of the Bicap building, the Head Start building. Where the old soft JP Paul softball fields used to be. It's a big enough piece of land. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anybody else got any questions? You might notice some changes in City Hall. I'm moving forward with some updates, some well needed updates. The ceiling is almost done. Um, Paige and I put a lot of sweat equity into the ceiling in the last two and a half weeks. And uh, Crendon redid the lighting. And it makes an enormous difference. An enormous difference. I didn't realize how dark the front and the back office is, really was until the lights were changed. And they're a flat panel LED, so they're no taller than the actual grid work itself. They're amazing, and the um, the electricity three of these poles equals one of the other ones. So hopefully, I'll see some drop in our electric bill too. Um, we're gonna do some painting. Um, the ADA door, I have a fix for that, and I'm gonna get that door replaced. So we'll also. Her recommendation and the League of Minnesota Cities Insurance Trust was asking a couple of times, it should be a push out door for fire emergencies and it's not. So we're gonna switch that. So it's a push out emergency ADA door too, just like the front door. Um, yeah, so pardon the mess while we do it. We might shut down another day or two, but I'm hoping to have a cleaning done at least by the next council meeting. We're gonna need artwork. Well, we have a bunch to put back up. <laughs> I just don't know where we're all gonna put it. I the big flat map that was between those two bay windows is going back up. That's one of the really old ones from like 1912. Um, Speaking but, of the windows too, are you gonna do the tinting? Uh, I do have a quote from Clarity Glass as well to tint the windows um, instead of putting uh, window treatments back up with the amount of sun that they bring in and the heat from it, the when we pulled the blinds down, the, the clips just disintegrated. So I do have a quote to have the, tint, the windows tinted, which will help with heat and cooling in both winter and summer. Um, there'll be a mirrored reflection on the outside during the day. We will still be able to see out, but then during night when we're having meetings like this, people will still be able to see in. But I think it'll be, a really big update um, on the window like too. Yes. Yes. Yep. I just think we should put some paint shelving across here, like glass and percussion. There's one in every group. Yeah. Took me two years to get rid of those things. <laughs> I think we should display some of the wonderful art from the high school. Oh, that are in the ceiling tiles? Mm -hmm. You're the second person to ask me if I'm gonna have the kids come and paint these tiles. I'll tell you the amount of hours that I put in <laughs> these ceilings. No one's touching them unless they break and I gotta put a new one up. <laughs> no, I think we saved um, a ton of money. We painted the grid work. Mm -hmm. um, the tile cost under a thousand dollars and we overbought. So we just sent 80 tiles back, 80 tiles back. Um, so if a new grid work drop ceiling with lighting costs 15 to 20 grand, this is costing us less than six. And most of that is all the electric as electrical. You should have seen us rip down the old <laughs> stuff, Nick. It was a mess because the old ceiling tiles were like a, um, like a inside vinyl and then the inside was all fiberglass. Uh, Paige and I were just a mess on Wednesday night last week. It was not fun at all. <laughs> I found though if somebody had painted the grid line with the ceiling tiles up, so then they like they glued together. That's what we did. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> so just remember that when you go to move them, because then it like they tear and then you got to get it right back in the perfect spot. So, so like do a box cutter or something like that. I should have told Bill Crendon because he came in on. Uh, the holiday to do the lighting when we weren't open, that it didn't matter if um, he ripped the old tiles down, but he had all of his team like 
cutting them with a blade to access the lights very carefully. And hindsight 2020, I should have just ripped them down for them. But I, you know, you just don't know until you start into something like this. Oh, so. Bruce up there. Yes. Oh, he did a remarkable job. I was so thrilled. And he's still working on finding um, a light to replace the existing one above the steps and the front door because that hasn't been lit for a while. And he's going to retrofit the one in the entryway to something similar to this flat panel, but only like maybe a one by one. Okay. So we'll have some more lighting in the front door, which is duly needed as well. So, yeah. Happy, happy to be able to see his work. Oh, and the pond has their furnace. Oh, yay! That's what and I, they're on? They are on. Great. So we should start seeing a real reduction in the, reduction electric, in the electric bill at the pond. Is the pond electric? Too? Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay. They have, a, they have an the off peak system. They have a floor radiant floor heat system. Yeah. So. And it's a pretty big electric bill in the winter time, but they try not to turn it on until they absolutely need to because there's no turning it off after that. It's just too warm. We've got a half a ton worth of on electric farm for a, if not radiant network, then mm -hmm. maybe a half a ton worth of in there. That electric bill is like, hmm, how much is, how much could I save by switching to propane? And then yeah. how, you know, looks like it'd be a couple grand to get a propane boiler. Well, depending on who's talking to you, it's right. like five or six to get a propane boiler. Far from open space, something like that. This whole building is electric heat. Okay. Wow. We used to have um, fuel oil downstairs, and now it's all electric. So it's not very cost effective. I'd like to change that at some point, too, if it starts to save us for the next 20 years. Grandfather somebody else in for a race. Anyway, enough of that about that. I just, I just like you guys might want to know that. You know, that we should compare, mm. you know, when you get a couple yeah. months down the road, yeah, a couple see, months down the road. Yep. see, you know, what last year's electric bill for the pond was versus this year's, you know, January. Yeah, but this year's been like unseasonably warm. So Which far. Which would be a fool? Yeah, right. Yeah, it ain't over yet. I get it though. Mm -hmm. You don't have, you, you can go January, January. It hasn't mm. been that. It's been cold, but it hasn't been that cold. True. You know, honestly, I'd be interested to know the difference just because, like, I was talking to Kelly Beaton last week about what it would cost to put in a propane boiler over there mm. just because I've got electric with a fuel oil backup on, you know, above her current apartment just because yeah. she's got a place sure. to live. And, uh, you know, I don't know. It's like 300 bucks a month in electric bill. It's just like you look at it. It's crazy, and you know your lighting is not doing it. I yeah. mean, because we replaced all the lights in there, so it's all probably the same lighting we use. Right? All our wintry and whatever. So, yeah, yeah, I can't imagine what, mm -hmm. what the pond is looking at. Yeah, <laughs> Add, you know, put another lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Auto pair. Uh, anything else? I think I said it all. Good. There are the trucks. One's outside. There's one outside. All right, hooked up to the roof today. The other one hopefully will be here by the end of the week. The, and they're delivering that one. They're going to deliver. Get that done. So they'll get to check it out afterwards. What's that? You get to check it out afterwards. Now, is this yeah. the one with just the plow, or is this got the sander in it? This has the plow and the sander. That's my question. I got to go over a few things tomorrow. Check the build sheet because there's a couple things that aren't on it that I wasn't supposed to be on it. Okay. But I'll go over that tomorrow. I'll just get it figured out. I have those um, those sales from Bob, so it lists everything that was supposed to be on it. Yep. So I'll be able to. At least for pricing, I don't like to do with the PM financial, so we'll yep. get those. And they can finally come set up with. with What's that? Can finally come off the old Yes, <laughs> yes. They don't have to keep saying it. I look back and it's been just over a year, year. since yeah. we started this. Yeah. So once the government went fast. <laughs> oh, it's been a really long process. But at least it 
resolution plate on it. That pesky pandemic, I tell you. I, I don't know what's going on. Exactly <laughs> it's over. The, so what do you mean? Like the summer plans for the summer, but you ain't gonna have to think about it again. No, if if they're not on it, I need to double check to make sure that they're supposed to be on the bill sheet. If they're not, it's just gonna have to be a matter of we're not paying as much as what we were gonna pay. I think it's, it's That's nothing right. that is going to really change the usability of the trucks. It's just a few things that the I thought right. were supposed to be on there. That's it. Yeah, which would make a difference. I mean, we're not gonna pay for something that didn't come from there. Exactly. Yeah. Other than that, I've got a few uh, set up a few things in the cab that the, the place to put the bottle and sander in didn't get to for some reason when I showed up over there. So I got to mount a few things and run some wiring and stuff. But we'll get that done. So this truck replaced your truck or the other guy? This one replaced the one I was driving. So another right. team. Yep. And then the other one will be here end of the week is the exact same pickup. Yeah. This won't have sand there. Um, the plow that was on the 17 will now go on to the other one that's coming. Um, the two plows aren't interchangeable from pickup to pickup yeah. because this new one that we got is uh, has the down pressure so it's able to scrape and peel a little bit better. You can technically... I mean, I guess they're somewhat interchangeable, as in you can hook it up to the front, but you won't be able to use the down pressure. If, if you were to take the old one and put onto this pickup, you've got the controller for the down pressure, but you won't be able to actually apply it because it's on the fly part of the system. But you can still hook them up, move them around, and do things like that to keep out of the back of it. And that, it drove nicely over here. Rides good for heavy duty one ton. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just put more in the back then too because you didn't get you the You don't have to put anything in the back there. right now with the sander in there. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> but they're longer boxes, right? Uh, this one is longer than the other one that I was driving. That was a four-door crew cab with a short box. Right. This is now a, a regular cab, cab with a long box. Um, the replacement for the old pickup it's essentially the same, just 17 years new. Okay. And you're not falling through the floorboards. Ship right. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's, it's nice when you don't have to try to pump someone around town. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to work on licensing as well. Yeah, I've got a temp license on That's this good. one. We'll get the rest figured out. Okay. I can't remember, Mike. Um, did we talk about a liner or some kind of insert for that sander so it doesn't destroy the box? Uh, both pickups, when I ordered them, I got them with uh, the rhino liner. box liner, rhino liner, okay. GM's version of rhino liner. Yeah. yeah. So, and then again, proper care, maintenance, rinse it out from time to time. It'll should be fine for the lifespan that you have it. Right. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I'm good. Good. On to your next project. Nothing to report there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> looking at possibly shifting it around a little bit, and that's where we are. So the spot where it was going to go isn't going to make sense since we don't own a three road that's not a road that isn't used as a road. We don't own it, so we can't really write it. Really, we don't. No, nope. we don't own it all the way no. through. We own it halfway. It's part of a D on the zoning map. Mm -hmm. Map. The thrift store owns it, correct? Yes, sir. One of the businesses. No. Um, you have to get up here and tell. It, the problem is, is that there's a platted alleyway behind the railroad that goes straight down and behind, and then another one that runs um, kind of towards the east to the southwest. So this has never been an actual road. It's not even labeled. <laughs> so it's actually part of Gillespie's property. It just happened. It just got taken. Let's put it that way. And it's been like that for 
long time. Yeah. Probably buying it wouldn't be worth it. <laughs> it's just right now the um, Grant Aid Trail runs through it, so there's already been an easement, you know, for the state approved for that. It's just, it's not an actual road in the state. There's a stop sign on it. <laughs> what do we know? I'm guessing that was just somebody just put it there. Yeah, probably. Into the ground and, yeah. 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 It's kind of like our speed limit sign on the snow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Should probably remove that one, put the sister oh, stop yeah. sign in the North Snowmobile yeah. only. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh. So we're going to see if we can't find a workaround and maybe slide that off the side somehow or come up with something differently. Mm -hmm. See if we can make it work or not. I still think it'd be a nice thing to have. It's just a matter of, as a draw, kind of, you almost need some trees to help. I think we'll find the right place. Yeah, we just got to keep we working can on get it. get it in there properly, it'll, it'll work. Mm -hmm. I think we can do it. So I'll let you know when I know more on that. Good enough. So it'll, it'll stay on the old business side of things. Sounds good. <laughs> Uh, I don't remember the last time I spoke to you guys about this, but given the given the timing of needing to have something to the legislature for 2021 by the end of January, and the enormity of what is now required by the state to have it on the ballot as a referendum, we need to prove regional significance and i'm still working with wood tech on that so instead of just slapping something together and crossing our fingers and toes and hoping that this the state legislature gives it to us i would prefer to do a much more diligent job turn it in at the end of january of 22 so it goes in the ballot in the general in november of 22. still on a time if it gets approved in that that process after <coughs> january of next year for it to be able to be a validated item. So we've got the time. It's, I'm just, I'm not going to rush this. The requirements have changed drastically since the 18 referent, or the 18 vote when it was on the ballot then. So I'm going to leave it at that. What are you proposing as a local Right now, what the city has been working on, Joe, is trying to get another half, is, is to get a half percent sales tax, city sales tax. With the revenue um, that, and I apologize, the numbers are not in front of me, but the revenue that our businesses bring in, uh, the Department of Revenue estimates somewhere between thirty to $34,000 in half percent sales tax revenue that the city could use for the street department. And a lot of that was all implemented so that we could fix infrastructure and, 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 and water and sewer as well. It just didn't pass in 2018 when it was put on the ballot then. So that was something Cheryl and I talked about. Was it in the last five months or something like that? I was like, uh, if there was even a 1% sales tax, I don't think anybody would, like, nobody's going to not buy gas in Timberline because of that, or no one's going to not right. buy some antiques at the <coughs> Cheryl's store or whatever, just, you know. Even if it was a one percent, you know what I mean. Just Provided what the Midgies sales tax is right now, it would equate that unless they get another half percent in um, approved next year, yeah. which I think they're already trying to work on because they still have to pay for the Sanford Center, and they're mm -hmm. also, I think, still trying to get a resort tax in down there, or at least at county level. So it's never been. Um, half percent doesn't really say as many people because then it's just you know equate to whatever else the rest of the county is doing i think the reason it didn't pass in 2018 was mainly due a part of how it shows up on the ballot it has to be worded a certain way it has to be yeah. worded that, that the voters approve to bond for the cost of x amount of infrastructure and in doing so the sales tax would pay for it but Education on that level is difficult when somebody just sees, oh, my taxes are going to go up to pay for this. So unfortunately, it didn't pass. So it says, yeah, it says basically on the on the ballot, my that your property it will be attached to your property taxes if 
that, that's that all they we see. don't yeah. see, and that's yeah, so really, it's, like, really, it's okay. Other people are going to come with their fish house, yep, to the lake. Yeah, and they're going to stop yeah. and pay taxes. If not, not the people that live here, yeah, because they're paying more taxes. And yes, like if someone who lives in town goes to Cheryl's store, yes, you have to pay a half percent more, but the bulk of that. The bulk of that would be paid by people who don't live here. Who exactly. Don't live here. Exactly. The problem that I think that um, the the community had and the, and the voters had was it was an educational piece. And although at my level I'd wish to be able to educate everybody that asks me what does this mean the day they have to vote, I at one point when I'm <laughs> changing hats from an administrator <laughs> to an election judge, I can't educate these people because I can't sway their votes. So that became an issue. Yes, nobody can say, you, you don't get to ask questions on the ballot. Nobody gets to say, hey, what does this mean? So the city of International Falls just passed a 1% increase this past election, and that took them over a year to promote to get that passed, and they're doing it for the exact same reasons. They have large amounts of infrastructure specifically water and sewer that need to get passed. And I feel like we need to like get people who can influence people to put something up on it like like have Cheryl talk about it on YouTube or something like that. So you, <laughs> so you can't like sway somebody but you can be like look at this thing on YouTube and then you know what I mean? And then let people look at all the possibilities right. that are it, that could come about. That are yes. possibilities. Yeah. yeah. Or we could just take a time signature sheet from the polling station. You know. <laughs> hundred? I, I thought it was fifty. I thought it was hundred. Okay, well, whatever. We got direction. <laughs> That's tough. There's a lot of roads coming through. Great idea. And uh, another sign. Well, it's good to it's, it's good to hear from a business from point point of point of view on it that that you would be for it. Well, yeah, I think uh, well, this is a great little town. It really is. Resources that a great little town should have so that it can do its operation efficiently. Yeah. They're all prosperous. Exactly. So that's where I'm at on that. I'm good with it. Oh. Next door. Next door, the commercial structures project. Uh, it is working its way through uh, the steps. Gail has to. Have a hard copy down for the state by the first, so it has to be in the mail later than Wednesday. Um, the engineers from Winsteth uh, reviewed the building. I'm sorry, does that mean that we have to have it filed with the county? No. no oh, no. oh, okay. No, I've... no, none of that has to be done yet. Um, the structural engineers looked at all three properties on Friday, um, and they're giving all the information to Gail for the application. Um, a purchase agreement has been acquired with uh, 30, the owner of 32 Main and the development core. So that's a good thing. And they found out, they found some very interesting things in 32 Main. The, it sounds like the, that roof is probably <coughs> failing in more than one place due in part to the close proximity to Anderson Fabric as well. That building, their roof tilts back, and oh. there's a there's a small gap between that building and 32 Main, and it's been draining directly directly onto 32 Main yeah. for many years as well. So not only is it that roof failing because of 40 um, shares of roof, but it's also failing in the southeast corner of the ceiling as well. So. It's, it's moving forward. Um, I hope to have more for the council once the application is submitted on the first. But right now, the good thing is, is that a purchase agreement has been signed for the third property and that was not, um, hadn't even happened at the last council meeting yet. So, so we'll be able to take control of all three at once. Yes. The, the third one might take a little bit more time because the person that claims to have possession of the deed really had like a, a witness signature of the deed holder and another person saying, I, I deed this to you. 
but it never got transferred into <coughs> the county. So the development court is already pushing forward with the title company to draft a new deed. Terry Shack, the actual deed holder of 32 names, got the property on a covenant for forfeiture originally. And that would explain some of the gaps of who holds the actual deed of the property. But it is filed with the county that he is the deed holder. So I think things will move over a little bit um, a little bit faster. The gentleman that signed the purchase agreement has been very cooperative. He's been sending all the copies he can find with all the documentation. So the development court is moving it forward as fast as they can to get everything done for the application. Any questions? Is this the immediate that we go Correct. It is. It's the three parcels just between City Hall and the theater jail. For the most part, they all were one building at one point. They're in serious disrepair. They're, they're, the roof and there's so much mold in the buildings. It's, it's a public hazard at this point. What is this cost? I mean, I knew that I did as well. So <coughs> please don't think that I'm a barring issue that I would have some uh, real new belief about Kirk Park. Scuppers, but then it's like the downhill on the roof and the scuppers. So it's like you got to make sure the scuppers open, but then also there's like a pool on the roof because it's not great. So if we're going to do foam and new roof and whatever to oh. add insulation to it and to grade the scupper correctly. And I'm like, you know, darn it, if I never own another flat roof building again in my life, <laughs> it'll be, you know, a open. Yeah, Britt is having the same problem with um, her building. We've re uh, roofed the law enforcement center and we still have ICAM. It's and it's hard to find people that right contractor to do that stuff. Sure. Any other questions about buildings? Okay. On to the election. Uh, April. Filing ended on Tuesday of last week and we had no one filed for the seat. So on April 13th, the city voters will have a ballot with um, <laughs> one line to fill in. So if you know of anyone that's going to do a write-in campaign by April 13th, I encourage them to do so. But right now, um, I'm not anticipating it's on a Tuesday? It is a Tuesday, yep. Yep. It always has to be that way. Tuesday. Yep. Yeah, I have heard another noise probably about that. Yeah. It's open. It's is, that, is there any way we no one. can we push to I mean I don't know. Get more people at the polls because this is going to be hard to even I I remember when they did the Sunday sales thing and that was only 22 people voted yep you know so uh <laughs> but all 22 of you if you had 22 of you and all 22 of you letting someone in correct correct right. mm -hmm. so yeah or the letter of people the four people sitting up there yeah but Maybe the water bill thing again, or the back to water bill. Maybe the put it on the pond uh, kiosk. Well, on, on the message board. On the message board. Is that a thing you could? Yeah, well, here's, I guess, and this is me thinking out loud here. Here's the case. The filing period has come and gone. Mm -hmm. yep. At this point, how should the city really push people to campaign for this? Because you can't put it in the paper. Right. The, put it on the, market. the voters have to be the one that are campaigning themselves. The city can't campaign for them, nor should they be sending money exactly. to campaign for them. Right. That's what I mean. So we have to do this as a on our own. Just a friendly reminder that we just still have an end uh, a, a vote. So yeah. Yep. That that, that, that we can do, but we can't. 
can't vote for somebody that's not. No, no, that's what I mean. It's just a friendly <laughs> reminder that says, hey, we're still having an open voting. Please come cast your vote. Mm -hmm. Right? Word of mouth. Mm -hmm. I am still waiting anybody to Anybody that with. actually puts in, anybody that says write me in and they put it on Facebook, they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. The question <laughs> is, are they going to accept it if they do? Because two of the four people that got written in at your general election were not going to accept that seat. Good point. No disrespect, no but we need to find the person. <laughs> the city needs to find the person that wants to put in the time and the effort to sit on the board. So if this gets denied again by the person who gets the most write-ins, what's our next step? <laughs> I've thought about that already as well. Um, I think we hold off and then, appoint. <laughs> well, it has to be by statute. It has to be half. Fifty percent or less of the of the term in order to appoint. So what would end up happening is the city could put it off until the 2021 November and put it on a, on a general election then and try it again. But the cautioning is each time we have to hold an election, it costs the city money that isn't part of a regular election time frame. So we don't win. Don't encourage it. But Find somebody for April. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to figure out. Should we just like make a decision to hold off until the November? I, no, it's already too late, Jason. Sure, it's every late. the balls are in motion already. I'm sorry. You guys have approved the April 13th election, so mm -hmm. that's already going forward. So what we have now is you have you have two and a half months. I think Jason's main question is: is if Nobody takes this, and mm -hmm. the seat remains empty even after the 13th. Mm -hmm. What do we do then? Mm -hmm. Then it can remain open until the next time you can hold another election. So we don't have to have another special election. In 21, I'll consult the city attorney on that. Possibly no, because we've made we've made full attempts to fill it at that point. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to miss seat. I I wasn't sure either. So, um, however, I still would like to have. I don't want I don't want to see tie votes come down to becoming a no. I'll I'll ask. Should it happen? Because mm -hmm. it has in the past. Mm -hmm. Is right. <laughs> I'll still work with Jennifer Parker. I know she and I had a long conversation after the general election about, and that this, this seat was vacant, about what that means for the city, and um, was hoping to get her on board to doing a good um, story in the paper about it. Um, just haven't had a chance to really catch up with her. Maybe as it gets closer, but. Sure. Something needs to be put out there um, for the public to hear. Very good. Uh, new business. So you got to use my podium. I just got it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I feel so happy about this. Thing. <laughs> Everybody give me crap about it. See, there's a microphone on it too. Yes, but I don't know if you really need it or not. There's a little button to turn it on. <laughs> Yeah, so gonna record. So I'm uh, I'm petitioning the uh, the city of Black Duck for uh, to catch me on my property. I'm a regular engineer from the town of Kingston Rapids. I'm not sure if we're on that, but basically I'm I'm off in ag land on the edge. I'm in a place where you know I kind of have this weird thing going on where my um, driveway actually hits the road in Summit Township. You know about 250 feet from Lauren Cook's place, and and then you got to ride on my driveway for about two thirds of it and then cross over into the city um, and then my home is in the city. So so I have two parcels not in the city, one parcel in the city 
and I cross municipal boundaries on my driveway, which is a good way of like imagining if you're in my shoes, right? You're like halfway up my driveway, I switch to municipal boundaries, and so I have to, you know, for my for my home residence, right? I have to potentially deal with special assessments and this and that from both, you know, from both city and from township uh, boundaries. Um, so for that reason, I'm petitioning the city for detachment. So to point to it over here, basically, here's my three parcels here, here, and then here. And so my home is located here. And so basically my driveway starts right over here, right? Lawrence Pokes is right here, mine's right here. You go up this edge and then cross over here and then drive all the way over here. So about, you know, like I said, probably 60, 70%, I haven't exactly measured it, is, uh, is in Summit. And so obviously Summit pays for the road maintenance, you know, on this part of Beachley Road, right? Mm -hmm. And then Black Duck, I presume, pays yep. for this part all the way to the scenic on this side, and then some of it pays for the other side. And so I assume that that is paid as a ratio of, you know, Kyle pursuing me, great litter, whatever, right? And that it's paid as a ratio of how much some of the township versus how much Black Duck pays. So. Yeah, it's kind of a shared responsibility between the township, the county, and the city. Right. You know, especially on that road. And that's mainly because of how far it is goes into the township too. Yeah, because it goes quite a bit past the summit of Town Hall Road. Yep. Yep. It goes to like a dead end, I think. Went over the east, right? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. I I've actually never been on it past um, past summit. Of Hall Road, so. Yeah. So that's my uh, uh I guess that's that's my side of the the petition. I'd be interested to hear your guys' thoughts and have you spoken to what I'm assuming? Yes, it would be Summit then, right? So I've, I've spoken to Eldon informally. They're meeting in March, so I haven't visited or spoken to them. Okay. Formally yet. Um, I have a verbal from them that they're going to support it. And so chatting with um, Star at the state, she basically said there's, there's a couple ways this can go. If both Black Duck supports it and Summit supports it, then it can be a $50 administrative fee or something like that that's mm -hmm. done. Um, if they support it and then Black Duck doesn't support it, then I can it effectively then we get to decide whether we take it to court. If we take it to court, it's interesting because I pay half the court fees, so Black Duck pay. would pay half the court fees, and it's not a whoever wins pays the other pool. Nope. You know what I mean? It's it, I would pay half and you guys would pay half. Mm -hmm. Um, and then whatever happens, happens. Right. So that's kind of um, kind of the path, okay. depending on how it goes. Um, Star, when I talked to her about it, estimated the cost as being you know, four to six K out of pocket kind of thing. So maybe we should just you know, just the cost of the thing. Yeah. Somewhere between ten and fifteen dollars an hour for the judges to travel. Yeah, well, at the end time. of the judge, we start paying them the moment they leave their house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, if so. if and my conversation with her too is if that is indeed something that they end up doing in person versus right. over versus Zoom being because of COVID. Remote, right? Yeah, like I asked her that too. I'm like, so it's COVID. So does that mean you only have an hour online? And she said, well, it really depends on the judge. But yeah, um, obviously, you know, one thing that's been kicked around, at least, um, and I don't know if it's been brought up here or not, is the idea of a rural taxing district for the, for the ag, you know, ag zone there. Um, I guess my only thought there is that I'd kind of still rather annex out just from the perspective of if we come up with a rural taxation where, where basically my taxes would be figured the same as if I was in Summit Township, but then the taxes go to Black Duck, that would actually, it would be cool from the perspective that then the dollars would be going to Black Duck. Yep. That's kind of nice. Yep. But then the downside of that is that I have no, like in Summit, I'm just another Summit taxpayer, right? I'm, I'm no different than anybody else as far as, okay, you look at Lawrence Pope next door and okay, figure out my taxes the exact same way. Everyone in Summit Township, right, is kind of a, you know, okay, we all pay a little bit for road maintenance, maybe um, a little bit probably, and then other than that, you take care of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, just from the perspective of, okay, I'm on my own driveway that I put in, I have my own well and septic, um, 
you know, made a fortune to run power all the way out there, all that kind of thing. So I really didn't get any of the, you know, like city roads, city streets, street lamps. You know, we really haven't put a, you know, any kind of investment into my property that we're losing out on by having that done here now. So and that's that's a very good argument. I have heard it from other larger cities too. Uh, Bemidji is one of them, where there are some smaller areas of uh, that large city that are in the same boat where they don't get the initial city services because they don't live in town. Um, my my biggest concern, and obviously I don't get a vote here, is that your your home parcel is on the municipal boundary. And if that were to be detached, then where's to say the cards don't keep falling? And what does that end up happening for the city in the long run? Um, that's why um, bringing up a rural taxing district may or may not help, but it may also be something to keep as the city, to keep that agricultural property in the city, but also to still have some folks that want two to three acres around their house and can afford to be out there with their own water, sewer, water and sewer and still be within that city. Granted, we don't have any initial commercial development or residential development down in that, in that section of the city. And that's one of the arguments for and against uh, a detachment. But um, again, it's an agricultural zone. So we gotta look at it in two different ways. When was the, when did it become part of the city? Do we know that? When was it annexed in originally? I would have to go way back. Do you have your, do you have your, your, uh, is that a, that I don't know, but what I do know is that, um, so this little spot right here, this, this little spot, that's just the cemetery. Here, that's the ancient cemetery, right? Yeah. So the reason this is named Stoner Lake as a history lesson is because the guy who was the city planner who drew this all out and who actually drew the plot map for the cemetery was named Stoner. So it has nothing to do with you know, more <laughs> modern ideas about why the lake might have been Stoner. So that's, <laughs> that's why we can't have the Stoner Memorial Drive. <laughs> oh, well, because we, we lose, lose, we lose, lose our, our city street sign all the time. We lost all our street signs. Yeah. Uh, can we split a lake between these two counties? You mean so interestingly, it government is lake. Yeah. Um, so, awesome. so what's interesting about my spot there is that um, this is a wetland. It's called Stoner Lake, has been for a hundred years. But as far as the city, state, whoever, DNR is concerned, it's a wetland. So technically, it's it's interesting because I own that. I own you know probably half the lake. Yeah. But Minnesota lakes are public, right? So technically I own the dirt underneath the lake. Yep. And if Christina's out there in a boat, I can't hey kid get off my yard. Nope. Which near as I can tell, like half of the reason for owning land is to be able to yell, hey kid, get off my yard. That you'll be able to build whatever you want, right? So <laughs> so I'm not exactly sure <laughs> what the purpose of, of me owning that is, other than that, you know, like my my next door neighbor Brian, right? The Dove Myers a long time ago, right? You can see what they did here, right? They yep. they unplotted, they made this a separate parcel, yep. and then they quit paying the taxes on it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So then my buddy Brian bought this piece, right? So we could be neighbors. And so he buys this piece, but then he doesn't have waterfront property, right? right. So then this got gobbled up by real estate investors. So then he had to kind of per acre pay through the nose to get it back so that he could then have waterfront because it's like, well, why didn't you, like, if you're going to make it, you know, carve off the water section and you know what I mean? That way you can still like, claim this water for the Yeah, and I and I I'd be very curious to what happened when that lower section actually became that weird kind of a piece of property because when you divide and separate, you gotta have the city on board. And I very curious to see how that was allowed at that time. Sure. <laughs> you know, I mean, if you. Well, you don't know if Bill Meyer was on the council or how he made that happen. You're, you, know, you know, you're spot on. <laughs> but, but it's um, basically, so the way it works out, like there, it just looks like land near the lake, but it's actually technically the cattails, right? Mm -hmm. So basically he said, okay, the cattails in the water, I don't want to pay taxes on it. So he just parceled it off, quit paying the taxes on it. It got state repossessed for, you know, tax mm -hmm. delinquency. 
and then the real estate investor or the reporting necessarily is bought it up. Do you have an abstract on your on your parcel? Um, on mine, mm -hmm. you mean the um, that's the the number on it right there that we want. Oh, not the not the parcel. not the tax parcel ID, but the actual abstract. The abstract is you know like your book, the history of the parcel itself, who owned it, and everything else from the oh. day it was actually uh, became an actual parcel description. I don't think I actually, I don't think I have that. It'd be cool to have that. Yeah, most, I mean, in a lot of times when the title work is done, that's something that changes hands from owner to owner, and then it's updated. Um, well, it may have gotten, it may have gotten mucked up because, so a little bit, it's interesting how I came by my parcel, right, because I was planning to retire here. So since I was planning to retire here, I actually bought my three parcels with my IRA. Because you can do that. Interestingly, it's perfectly legal to buy land with your IRA. You just can't do anything with it, right? So literally, like, you can't even have a picnic on it. You can, like, walk on it and get, say, yep, nobody's land grabbing on my IRA. You can't do anything. So so I was going to retire up here, but then I decided, uh, like, why wait? Like, do you really want to build there and not somewhere else? So then I distribute it and pay the taxes on it. So the interesting thing is, that technically when I first bought it, it wasn't me, it was a different legal entity that was my IRA that's not me, that I control that bought it. And then I had to like distribute it, pay the taxes. And so then it shifted from my IRA to me, right? So it kind of took an interesting double hop there. And so so even if the even if the transfer of documents, if that would have happened from like a normal sale, oh. it might have been that that then went to my IRA company in Colorado and that then it got it over to me when I paid, you know, deeded it and paid the taxes and whatever. Um, that maybe it didn't get back to Sean and Ryan. I got a curious question for you. Sure. Why don't you go the other way and we annex you in? Well, you got to look at it, right? I mean, so <laughs> where I'm at on the road, I'm already in Summit. It's 250 feet from Lloyd's Post, right? And so. That, that is, we could we could annex two parcels in, or I can annex one out, right? But you look at the city of Black Duck, and you look at the parcels around my house, right? And my house more closely resembles everything else in Summit, right? Where there's no city water, no city sewer, no asphalt roads, no road maintenance, no new trucks to buy, no all of this kind of thing. And so... If you look at my property, and, I, and that's kind of what I did, is I said, hmm, this kind of looks more like Summit Township to me than it does to Black Duck, which is, you know, so, you know, like I said, okay, we could come up with an ag taxing district and we could annex it in, but then who's to say that, you know, that next year or the year after that a, a different city council comes in and doesn't say, okay, well, you know, taxation rates are this or that or the other thing, right? Whereas if I'm in Summit, I'm just another taxpayer. It's, it's no it's no different than anybody else down there. So for that reason, that's why it's appealing for me to just blend in in Summit Township versus being uh, in Black Duck, where I'm where I get to be part of things, right? Like I could I could do things like yes, I can be on the fire department now, but I could serve in other ways, right? Living in Black Duck that I can't not in Black Duck. But just this whole business of of being of being not one of of being not the normal path. Does that make sense? So you don't want to follow the rules and regulations that are set forth by Black Duck. You'd rather do it by the other township. It's not as much the rules and regulations. It's really more that, you know, if you're just like everybody else, you kind of know what to expect because you're going to get treated just like everybody else. Does that make sense? Whereas, you know, if you're different, it's like, okay, well, we're talking about maybe we might propose a special taxing district, maybe, right? And then you might maybe change that later, right? Or, you know, so it's just that, okay, I'm kind of out in the weeds and I'm different, right? Like, it's not like my buildings are on Main Street, right? Where it's on Main, it uses city water, uses city sewer, um, it uses, you know, all of the, um, you know, snow removal and all those kinds of things, it all applies. And so it makes sense to be part of the group and contribute to it and get back from it because because at on Main Street I'm just like everybody else.
just from my recollection, Christina and Max, you might know this a lot more than I do. Do we have residents inside of Black Deck that are using their own city or city or non-city water and city sewer? We actually do. Well, we do. Um, I want them. And Rasmussen's just built a house up on Coswell and Carlton. Um, and the reason they did that is because that main ends at the end of Carlton over by South Check Lagoon and doesn't go north yet. Um, we have, we own, gosh, Mike, help me remember how many feet between Carlton and Croswell before it goes into a township. 800 feet. Oh, I don't even know that far. It's not. So until, until uh, the city well. can extend that main and have services on that side, which obviously Rasmussen's and, um, uh, couldn't, yeah, do to build their home. They were granted the, you know, the variance to have their own water and sewer okay. their subject, just just as we did for Cheryl and Joe. And fourth, and on Fourth Street, the end down there, that doesn't have. Yeah, actually, we didn't even have to do a variance because we were in the agricultural zone. We already sure. knew there was no services there. There's nothing close, so there was no yeah. variance needed for that. But yes, Fourth Street when, southeast. And when I was when. That was mine was agricultural or mine also. Because mm. it's gonna be zone side. And now it's residential. Just just to mention from beyond the end itself, I think they what happened when you approve that, then it's going to be your drawing to have that lot or that zoning. He wants that same thing. Right. You could, and it's a slightly different situation because you could argue that you've been maintaining his road. You can't really argue that you've been building it on it. Um, you know, so that, but that is a possibility, right? I mean, in order to be able to even file this application, you have to be on the border of these municipalities, right? You, you can't have somebody in the middle of it file this and say, right, that's mm -hmm. correct. So it really is a you know, He's chipping away at the on, edges, on the however, edge, and, and the borders. He would be the border if we did it for him. Right. That's correct. Oh, well, he's already the border now. Mm -hmm. Right? Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. On, he is. on two edges. He's on the two border. edges. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it pays for anybody on that street. Joe, I have a question. Um, your driveway uh, north of Beachley, does it get plowed all the way to your house by you? Um, so from Beachley to your home. From Beachley to my home. Beachley, yes. yeah, yes. to your home. Do you, you plow it? By you. you get plowed by you. Okay. been an interesting learning experience because I've got a UTV with a, I've got a canine defender that's enclosed in heaters, so that's nice because it's cold up here, right? Um, and then I've got a thrower for the front of it, so that it's about 60 inches wide on the upper side when you get down to the back. But then I've got crushed on the driveway, right? And if you, as it turns out, if you fill up your thrower with crushed granite, you're going to break a shear pin. So... So I bought some extra shoe pins mm -hmm. and I've tried not to fill up my. Or you wait till the snowpack is thick enough, but you don't. Try, yeah, you don't try to sell it. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's a it's an interesting game because uh, you know I can I can have it ride up just a little bit and then I don't pick up stuff, but then still you know as it undulates or whatever you tend to you can still clip a little bit. So Dig you know, down just I'm, I'm getting better at it, but you know generally if I you know I I'm not going very fast and I definitely ease off the throttle. I start to hear things that sound like knock, no. <laughs> so. Ping, ping, ping noises. <laughs> yeah, that was something I knew that I had to get after myself because I was like, hmm, my driveway is, you know, three quarters of a mile divided by two. So, you know, that multiple attempts to show. And uh, it's like, uh, that's going to be expensive if I have people plowed on it. And if we had snow like last year plowing it, where would you pile it up for current generation, right? Good question, good question, good question.
So what are the taxes? That's the question everybody's going to ask, right? That's mm -hmm. where we're at. How much money are we? I guess we can look it up and see what my tax is on that parcel. I don't know what it is. Or did I touch it? So you don't know what's the name for your for taxes? No, just because it's the three different parcels. So, so you, don't, you don't like know how much you have this parcel or that parcel? No, I, I certainly have bills for it and stuff. I just don't know. And that parcel you're talking about is what is it almost 23 acres? Correct. Then it's interesting, right? Because it's you know, this this picture is really good for fire than uh, than that one. But if you look at the the amount that is above ordinary high water line, right? Like it's that the shade of that that uh, cat tail line. Yeah, yeah, the cat tail line, right? Like the. I've actually thought about going across the lake over there because apparently I own a couple of trees on this side of the lake over by. Uh, Stand or something like that on some tree that I own over there. But, uh, but in truth, I haven't been across over there to see my one tree that I own. You said summit meeting was in March? I believe it's in March. Uh, I don't think we're going to stay next. Market value of nineteen thousand one hundred. Your house? That's probably just the land is prior the land to the house being that, built, though. Yeah, because yeah, I doubt the assessors yes, finished it. it. When, when did you uh, put your house up? Um, my house has been under construction for the sixteen months prior to October third. Sorry, Laura, we can't find it. Property taxes. Mm, that's a calculation that's for the assessors down in Alternative County. I think also, I have had an assessor say that I can probably <coughs> send it to you or whatever. Yeah. 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 And at any time a person applies for a land use permit for the city, if it's got any values on it at all. We've been doing Elchard County acts as our assessor every fall. All of our land use permits go down to the county, so they utilize that. If they haven't been able to get to every township within the county to look at every entity and structure and land to see if there's any improvements, they use that from our municipality to assist with that land values and structure values. So I know that they've gotten Mohomi um, permits <coughs> from us. Because that was in 19, or did I just get 19? Yeah. Yep. Because it's not updated through the Beltran is the GIS. And that'd be yearly, they do that, right? Uh, I send them the permit yeah. yearly, yes, Sheldon, yeah. but they don't always look at every township and city um, every single year. They do their board of adjustments every year. 
to discuss it with the landowners, but that doesn't mean they change everything each year. Like you added, you know, 2,000 square feet to your home this year, they may not be able to see that until the following year if you weren't, if you're, let's say, like I'm in Heinz Township, they just looked at our house last year, they probably won't look at it again for another two years because they can't get around to all the townships in order to do so. The staff isn't big enough. Okay, well. What other questions do you guys have for Joe? I don't have any. Yeah. So just to, just to remind the board that because it's a work session, you can't really take action on right, the, on the request. No voting tonight. But right, but it'll we could put it on the ballot in February. Or put, put it, it on the agenda. I'm sorry, not the ballot. <laughs> wow. We can put it sorry. On, we can put it on the agenda for February, February, February 8th. So is that soon enough? Yeah, I, I think that's when it has to happen. Just take action. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, once it's once it's been heard, sure. we have X amount of days that um, the board has to take action. So February eighth would be a additional month. Okay. And I would encourage the board if they have any other additional questions to reach out to Joe between now and then as well. I mean, that's the agenda. Right. right. I can honestly tell you how uh, nothing against you personally. Sure. I honestly tell you that I, I'm not a big fan of the unannexing property. Sure. Just so I, I I feel like I should at least say what I'm thinking here. So. Oh, and and I can you know. Obviously, I didn't come tonight expecting a pretty good amount. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate that. So. Nor did you come. Nor did you come to pick a fight. I, no, certainly. Yeah. We we get. Well, and, and you know whether I annex out or not, <coughs> you know, I will still be a still be involved here as a firefighter, right? Mm -hmm. Still serve in that way because I'm honestly one of. Well, I, you a great honor in my life, honestly. So I plan to continue that way. I also plan to continue owning property on Main Street and contributing that way. So I like I'm going to be around and involved either way, if you will. When you first came in, when we were talking earlier, and you said, "What a delightful community Blackett is," and now it's let me out. Yeah, I think it's five, five miles. No, it is um it is a delightful community and it's it's an interesting thing, right? Because so you know, my wife, right? Yes. Chef Hughes, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Off Highway One. Yep. Has a black duck mailing address, right? Has considered herself her whole life to be from Black Duck. Interestingly, has never lived in Black Duck proper since we moved here in 2019, right? So her whole life, she said she's from Black Duck, never having actually been a resident of Black Duck, right? So there's, so we have a bit of a unique thing going on here where we're from Black Duck, even though we're not, or a pretty wide area around Black Duck, right? And so there's, so, so given that, it's like, okay, if, if my wife her whole life has been from Black Duck, Apparently, whether she's annexed in or out, she's still from Black Duck. get to be from Black Duck, right? Um, and so it's really just a question of, you know, from that perspective, whether it makes sense to be in or out of Black Duck from a, from a which township <coughs> annex perspective. But, like I said, this is a great little town. I love being a part of it, and I will continue to be a part of it. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any questions. Thanks again, Joe. Jace? I think you should stay on and sit in that seat right up there. Exactly. I was not that the whole time. Boy, that's the new business, business, business Jace wanted to bring up. It's mm -hmm. the most passion I've heard about it. Right? Well, this is... Go on, baby. 
Well, yeah. we're not trying to crash it, maybe. But. No. Well, this is this is the reason for change, and a lot of people would ask. You know, a lot of people said, "You're nuts." Like, you lived in Colorado. Why did you the black belt? Oh, it's always different on the other foot. And yeah, it, the yeah. answer is it's uh, a lot of people are too close to see what a remarkable little thing is going on. You know, in terms of what black belt is, what it has to offer. I mean, to be, you know. Cheryl and I always wanted to live in the country in Colorado. When we moved there, five acres of trees, unimproved, no electric on it, no nothing. Five acres of trees was 200 grand. And that's pine trees where you got to mitigate them all the way up because if you don't, you know, fire comes through, it's going to burn the whole thing to the ground. Sure. Right? So that was 200 grand. And then when we left, two acres of trees was 200 grand. And then, and remember, this is in Colorado. So you're not digging a 150 foot well like I had to. You're digging a thousand. Yeah, right. You know what I mean. And then on top of it, you're you're not. You know, I'm 25 minutes from the Chevy Center. In Colorado, I would have been 20 minutes from a gas station. You know that kind of thing. So the fact that I'm two miles outside of town and I can grab through the timber line and go to a movie when we're not drowning in COVID, right, because I've got a grocery store nearby and all that. Right. It's really, really cool. I even compare it to, you know, my sister-in-law lives in Climax, right? Oh, yep. And, you know, they got a littler school than we do there. Mm -hmm. They got a bar and a gas station. And that's it, right? They got a lot more than a bar and a gas station. Anybody from Climax is either going to Grand Forks or they're going to Crofton or my go to Crofton when you're closer to Grand Forks. I, I think people's <coughs> perspectives are exactly what Joe says. You get so close to it, the magnifying glass is all you can look through. Right. Here's the thing I would say, just as a dollars and cents kind of thing, right? About this, just to keep in mind if you decide which way to vote on this. You know. If you decide to oppose it, there's a certain amount of, and then, then I can do math, right? I can say, okay, this is what my taxes are going to be in Summit. This is what my taxes are going to be in this. Here's how long the buyback is, right? But if you decide to oppose it and you do a rural taxing district and you make it so my taxes would be the same as if I was in Summit, then suddenly you've made it really hard for me to decide that I want to spend four grand to go to court, which may or may not pay off, and spend four grand of of the town's money, right, going to court, then, okay, at least from a dollars and cents, yes, I still have to deal with the, I'm crossing a municipal boundary on my driveway, which is annoying, but, like, if there's no taxation difference, that makes it a little harder to make that argument that I should pay four grand and go to court, right? Mm -hmm. So, please consider that as you decide what to Good. Good. All right. Thanks again, Joe. Thank you. Have a nice evening. You too. Thanks, Thanks Joe. Well. Thanks. And just so the, the board is aware, the rural taxing district I'm looking into with El Trenton County right now to see if it's something we can do for our ag um, property owners because you have to prove that it's something that does not have any, you know, commercial or future development and that it's there to sustain itself the way it is. Um, what it would essentially do is it would give those property owners a lower percentage tax rate than black that's proper, basically, if you're industrial or your business in your main residential area um, versus the parts that have no services whatsoever to the city. Um, it would pose a good argument for those folks that have, there's some folks that have been on Phoenix for years that are like, you know, when we used to have a street lighting fee and they're like, I don't know why I'm paying this. I don't even live in town. I have my own street light that I pay Bill Charlie Electric. And that's one of the reasons the city got rid of that street lighting um, fee. But um, I could make the same argument.
make it. That I live on a street where I do not have water or sewer, yet I pay taxes. Nope. I, think, I don't necessarily, I think you guys need to look at it as my driveway. Oh, my service to provide it. Followed by me. <laughs> I, uh, Sheldon was saying about you start on the end and you work your way in, but as you work in, you're going to all of a sudden be providing service where you got all the road right. or street lights or water and sewer. So, I mean, I, you're not providing any services to somebody. How long ago was it that we just <clears throat> on annex this last piece of property? Lundberg's had a bigger argument based on the statute. And you don't want to have that domino effect with the other residents living in that little community. They want to get it on that on annex. You know what I mean? Then you start making up where six walls instead of three. And depending on how much the property is assessed for each place, it could be from coming from a nineteen thousand dollar property jump up to a lot more. It's right now looking at $4,200 and that's without it being finished according to the Beltrami County. The 2021 proposed taxes are $4,246 and of that 2114 is for the city of Lexington. The rest of it goes to the county, the school district and 2014 $2,114. Yep. $114. So yep. if Two years to come back to the city and grow, not shrink. I mean, just looking at the other county versus or Pine versus Blackwell, it's like twenty dollars so more, or it's twenty dollars. We pay twenty dollars more. We pay twenty twenty to thirty dollars more in taxes for Blackwell versus Pine. So I mean, it's we could match. Almost, almost to the same assessments as they would. I mean, if that's what's going to keep them in. But again, they're looking for a decision. Right. Mm -hmm. But then again, is he still going to be? And we don't know okay that we for a, can. Right. I mean, is is he just don't want to pay the levies that are coming up? You know, is, does he not want to pay the high property taxes to help out the school system, to help out the police? Well, I mean, well, the school district, the school, school district, district levies would be completely separate. If we're just looking at the city of Black Rock levy, that that home, that property is going to pay at twenty one fourteen right now, and that's still under construction, and their home is not finished according to the county. So that's going to continue to go up once it's reviewed and mm -hmm. finished according to the county assessor. So, yeah. Um, so twenty one. So I, I did have a conversation with your city attorney about this prior to knowing that Joe wanted to remove yes. it from the regular um, council meeting because he couldn't attend. And one of the things Joe Langle stressed was to ensure that the council knows the factors of subdivision three, which I presented this last for you guys. Upon completion of the hearing, da, 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 all I'm gonna say just this right here. The property, okay, that's the other, so the property is a rural in character and not developed for urban residential, commercial and industrial purposes, that the property is within the boundaries of the municipality and abut the boundary, that the attachment would not reasonably affect the symmetry of the detached municipality, and that the land is not needed for reasonably anticipated future development. This is what the city has to prove. Uh, in making the findings, the chief administrative law judge shall consider all applicable comprehensive plans, land use regulations, and land use maps of the affected municipality, town, and county that have been adopted at the time the petition was submitted. Then the chief administration law judge may deny the detachment on findings that the remainder of the municipality cannot continue to carry on functions of government without undue hardship. The chief administrative law judge may decrease the area of property to be detached and may include only a part of the proposed area to be detached. And then it goes on to 
properly. So you through this as you consider your arguments right now, you know, um, they both sides have reasonable arguments. It's 50 50. Right. It's a coin flip. Like the property was it over by Anderson to Oscar? Yeah. Yep. Right? Plow through. We still plow that, even though it's still Heinz. You mean over here? No, not Oscar. South of Oscar? No, not Oscar. Um, behind Jehovah Witnesses. The Kingdom Hall? That's yeah, here. Yeah. So that's the Kingdom Hall is right, the one that right, 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 here. Right, right, the one that washed away. The road yeah, that washed away. The road and then the road back. Croswell, right. this, that's this development here. Can we plow that? that? So that's Croswell. We work with the county on that. Mm -hmm. And we plow up there, and in return, they plow beaches. Yep. Because we're never down that way, because it's way down there. Right. We don't do anything else down there. So they plow Beachley. They take care of Beachley for us, basically. We plow Crosswell. Right. And so, so it's a trade off. Correct. It's, it's a trade off, it's, and most townships a, contract with the county for plowing. The, it's a handshake, talk about it every year. Hey, you want to do that again? We'll do this. Yes, it's just easier for both. So, oh, sorry. so I, I guess my question would be is what would it take for a pickup truck to run down his road to get to his side on Black Duck on his property? Oh, you mean if we offer to plow his driveway? Correct. Well, it's not that far down there. It's just we don't plow anyone's personal driveway. And, and Jason, to the same argument, Summit's not going to plow his road either. Okay. If, if the annexation, if the detachment happened, they can't plow it either. Okay. For us, it's <coughs> do for one, do for everything. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. And I've spoken to the clerk of Summit, and they specifically said that wouldn't be a road that would end up plowing for him. So, honestly, I don't even think that that's I don't even think that that's a weight in the scale of this. Um, my my gut and what what does upset reasonable symmetry mean to you? Because that's what the judge is going to get to look at and go. What does reasonable symmetry mean to me? Where's the fair line in between everything? You know, do we have to make do we have to make a little notch? <laughs> Or do we get to keep a nice straight oh, line? Oh, you mean on our property? Correct. That's what that means. I mean, if there's a north and south. I was just going to say, if a judge looks at it now, it's going to say it's not symmetry anyways. <laughs> or is it referring to, like, for him to access his home, he has to access it through the county or the county? No, when they're talking reasonable symmetry, they're talking the squareness of the road or mm -hmm. border or okay. anything like that. I know, exactly. <laughs> then we just know. We can't prove it with where this no, is. No, because he could use, well, I don't know if he's really going to use it or not, but they could definitely use black duck collision with an issue. Yeah, where we literally go around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we obviously have no problem doing it. No. Uh, but we've also annexed in property to make it unsymmetric, you know, without symmetry, too. So all of the property down by that property that the hippie has here was never in but that's property. not to me that's not what i don't think that's when you're looking at the paper when you read that rule would not unreasonably affect the symmetry i don't think it's unreasonable what's not unreasonable the symmetry that is unreasonable <laughs> i know what's going to happen and i we can take this to court and i think we're going to lose do you really i think what i would i think we would i think you would absolutely you got two yeah. pieces coming outside off his driveway yeah. and your county coming in off his driveway i don't think you guys have a chance i think that's what? i think that's the determining factor right, right there if, if you live city property you enter his property his driveway i think you but from going from one to yes. the other, it's going to be if your place, the only way in is off the city roadway. Where
whereas his, he, he can come in off the county and his driveway is over there. We have absolutely nothing really? there to hold them. We've got two pieces outside of it. We've got more than a good argument, I think. That's what I'm wearing on. So, just for perspective, here's a void I asked the county. Do, do I like it? No. I don't. What the difference of the values would be from Summit's tax rates to the city's tax rates. And obviously, we know going into this, the city's going to be higher. But if they were to annex, the estimated taxes they pay the Summit total would be 28 26. So it would be cut in half. So does a judge look at that and say, hey, you know what? No, that's not part thing, of it's not part of the statute. The only thing you're looking at is to bail on this city? I don't know, because the judge will have to hold up the statute. But if a guy lets him do it, then like I was asking earlier, his surrounding neighbors. I think you're watching along. puzzle piece. I think you're watching the second domino right now. Come in and say, well, I would like to do that too. Yes. It's it's the undue hardship that the the city would have probably the biggest um, foot hold on this is what's what's going to be the biggest hardship on the city if this detaches is the future potential detachment on top of that and the levy going down further and further at, or excuse me getting spread out to less and less. That's the biggest hardship the city's going to see is all of a sudden now we're getting this great development. We have this beautiful home being built inside our municipal boundary. The tax levy's going up. We're going to be able to provide more services. Regardless of where that service is going. And now we're going to get it taken away from us. They, they're building a half million dollar home on that parcel, you guys. You had to figure your property value was going to go up. But you're talking about keep in mind coming to town to pay the taxes. I and I get it, it's a fair argument. It's fair for everybody, right? It's always down to the dollar amount, but so we can pay six grand and the little change there. Or you can cut them a deal. Uh, that's where I was okay. trying to figure out is how. So so this is this is why Star from the state has put in front of me the potential of looking into the rural taxing districts. Large lots of larger cities have them. Some cities don't. I talked to Leah today and she said there's a lot of places in Bemidji they pay the taxes regardless and they don't have any of the services. Mm -hmm. They don't have a rural taxing district. But some cities do. Now I don't know how all of the all of Bemidji is zoned, but all of that ag zone, half of that stuff is undevelopment, can't even be developed anyway. So it has no plan in place because it's all too wet. How many homes are in that area? A dozen at best? Well, if you look at it, a dozen people want to get out. That's what I, my argument is. Right. You can only get out if you're on the border. Other than him, there are only. But that border to be coming in, right we've got to chip away at it. He right. leaves, his neighbor has the same option. He leaves, his next neighbor has the same right. option. But if, I would if you go back to why, nobody wants to see him leave, but if you go back to why our, some of our opinions, you're going to lose it in court. Right. Eventually, mm -hmm. let's go to court because we're not going to lose that one. And that ends the dumb process. You know, exactly. Eventually, you're going to have services. They're going to come in on city streets, whatever it may be. That gives you a foothold, but when they're coming in that town, you don't want to see them go. I get, I, I agree, but you look at the outcome in the long run. Um, yeah, uh, you got The attorney says has told me just from looking at what he says that he doesn't think it'll be difficult for Joe to succeed if he pushed it. The question is, will he push it? And he just said it tonight. He yeah. knows exactly what the arbitration is going to cost, and I believe he would probably be. It would be a drop in the bucket for him it's to be it, able to fight it. Or it's going to cost him six grand. Okay, he's going to save how much? Two grand a year. Two grand. Yeah, yeah, I think he's going to do a year just us to push it. Yeah, after three years, it. he's saving the money. Yeah, right. of course he's going to go after it. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. So how fast 
do we have to offer up a different tax method? I don't know enough about it yet. I've only talked to Leah and I need to talk to Cody Street because I don't even know if the county allows it. You They're see, the ones that take care of all of our So that's not even, to me then, that at this point, that's not even an option. Because it's too early, right? Because it's too yeah. We don't even have that to offer on the table. It's either yes or no. Yeah, we can't really make a promise for something that hasn't been decided yet. We only have two weeks to look into it. That's too, too little and too late. Right. And I don't even know the proper steps to do it. I've just recently been able to pull the statute and look at it. To me, it seems rather reasonable if you could find something out or if you guys could come up with something approaching that we're trying to work on this thing. Mm -hmm. We're still how long, here. Yeah, how long will you be in Maybe the way? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is he even able to after filing the position uh, the petition and now we've ha we've heard it. And we gave him a deadline of February eighth. Uh, we have to make a decision. So there right. is there is a timeline. Yes. yes. And but he can withdraw it. Levy here. Okay. So you can push it back another month so we can get more uh, knowledge into the. We knowledge. can't do it. He has to pull it. So could no. you reach out to him and ask him? Or would it, or would it come from that? I mean, he was basically saying if we could make this, Increase this point. you know, like, even up so that the taxes aren't so different. If you, what do you say to the governor then? If you do it for one good, but if it doesn't, you're probably going to lose more money doing it for the other than the other thing in agriculture, then you're going to lose the right. Right. Oh, You're not going to get a dozen people in agriculture going, hey, I want to get all two and going through the process and pulling. If you drop an agricultural zone, you're going to lose more by taxing all of them at a lower rate than just let them go. But do we everybody else how they are and hope that. But if you let one go, down down do you have that balance back then? You yeah. know, if I'm tax capital for a real estate. Yeah, but do you then you'll end up paying more taxes on the property if you don't get it? Right, but do we have to give that to the club if they're not asking for it? That's what I'm saying. Would you have to do more tax rate if you decided to do that? Yeah, you'd, you'd have, have to have do to it. You'd up. you'd have to establish the, the uh, district by um by property by parcel. Well, that's why I don't know how many are in there, but that's why I'm just saying. Say there's eight of them in there, then you have to store eight of them where there's not eight people right here complaining about it. Yeah, we would lose a lot more. Shoot, it'd be kind of nice to have a little more time on it. But we ain't. Well, technically, you have like 30 days since they've received the petition. So we push it back to the next no, month? Yeah, no, sure. just, no, 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 because we've turned it in. Yeah, the, the law judge, the, the, Star Holman, who works for the law judge yeah. for the de detachment, once she's received the paperwork, that's so when the, the clock eight, starts ticking. Gotta, gotta figure out the, yeah. You have yeah. to make a decision if you're gonna allow the detachment or not. <clears throat> come back to this if we can if you if you, we can come back to this if we want to before we leave this evening jace okay. was there something you wanted to bring up to us tonight i'm just going to touch on it i'm looking at just putting more people on our roster so okay because uh, in the near future we're going to have one running around and another one from the spring that's going to come in so andy salah for attorney to leave we're doing the best we can and we're getting we're getting pretty covered so with what we have but Someone heard of the darn bit that they got more. It's been tough. It's tough as it's been a month. The winter's cold. So <laughs> it's been tough for a long time. But it's pretty darn good for law enforcement. We're really good. Considering it's changing my list. Right. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Right. It's just good news, though. So right. just keep in the loop on that. Good. So we're going to walk it on bread. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to speed it up for you guys. Yeah, we know. <laughs> That is a valid point, though. I mean, the one the to, other. Well, I'm looking at the partial map here. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got the 
business owner around the corner. I'm gonna be on search the wrap around. Mm -hmm. Can't lose the potential, lose a lot more. I think what I would think of To vote on it today, we're always go. Oh, we need to. All right, you know what? I'm Part of me says dig in, dig in my heels and pray for the best. Try it, but the other part just says cut your losses. I mean, can the city afford six thousand dollars out of pocket right now to fight this? Uh, the city really can't budget for a legal fees because we don't know when the next thing's going to come up, Jason. Right. So you would afford it regardless. It depends on how much Good point. the city wants to save. The legal fees? No, just, you know, <laughs> how many properties you want to keep inside the city. If you want, if the, if the board is in agreement to keep this parcel and to fight for it, then fight for it. If you're going to give up, then give up. Further down the road, how many more parcels are you going to lose then? And the thing is, though, I mean, Jason's saying that he's got two pieces that adjoin him that are outside of the limits. That is going to be the difference. Yep. But the other people that they don't have land outside, they really don't have anything to stand on. That was his. Well, it was his choice to buy land. Outside. Right. No, I get that. Yep. Totally agree. I'm just saying that I think that's where his biggest. See, our, win for himself. our minds are ticking the same way, but I don't think that the judge isn't going to look at that. They don't get to look at the numbers. No, yeah. they don't. They well, don't. obviously. Yeah. So it's just going to be why you want to leave. Here's the reason why. And does it support the. And you see, because you notice not statute. a single reason brought to the council by Joe was financial. Because mm -hmm. well, he knew what he was talking about. There's very few people that have through the steps of taking taking you guys to court. But if he does, he takes you to court and he wins. Anybody else that's here to court, he's hey, there's another six grand. It doesn't necessarily say it's going to stop a domino effect. If you guys go to court and you lose, other one might follow. If someone's serious, they're going to follow suit the same way. Take you to court, if you and make you pay it again. And right. maybe lose again and take it. I mean, I, I don't think you should worry about the domino effect as much as maybe you're thinking about first. Yeah, there's there's plenty of places down in Bemidji that have been through this with the city. And uh, my boss, one of them, he tried to get me too. You know, yeah. he was in our thing. Yeah, I say it was his fight. But that annexation, northern. He doesn't. He has his own water sewer. Yeah, and it it um, happened for a very long time. A lot of people took Bemidji to court. Court. Yeah. And it was their loss and then our gain for when our city taxes got about 50 billion. All right. I just don't see why a guy who claims to be community minded wants to leave the community but still have them. The other thing that I thought about while we were talking he is a business owner, owning a business on Main Street. That doesn't fucking have to stay on Main Street. I mean, shoot, pick your battles a little bit too. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel reasonable both ways. I agree. I don't think, I don't think you can see him going too. But if, like in my line of work, if you don't think prosecution can happen, you can't bring it in front of a judge. If you don't think you're going to win this, why are you going to spend the money and burn a bridge on a business owner in downtown too? I don't know. I don't know what to before, you know, they've had, you know, Kevin Beck lived in town and had his businesses and, and he sat on this board and <coughs> he had to make decisions for both sides many, many times, but there's a lot of business owners that didn't live in town or the other way around. They did and the business was out of town, so mm -hmm. I don't know. I made the statute.
copy for you guys to read. You know, I'll have the resolution drafts on the agenda for February 8th for you to consider. You have one either way. <laughs> um, well, honestly, the, it's a pretty easy resolution for me to draft. It gives you a yes or a no kind of thing. Support or opposes. Well, that, that's, that's it. That's. <laughs> You either support or you oppose it, and I'll have the draft it before you. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything else for this evening? Probably not. Uh, I would move to adjourn. Is that a motion? Or you asking for yeah. a motion? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.